John Finamore's Souvenir Programme. I think we should put him in a longboat till he's sober. I'm sorry? Put him in a longboat till he's sober. No, I, I still... Put him in a longboat till he's sober. Early in the morning. The last few years have not been kind to you. <laughs> now you feel as though you would like to murder somebody. I do not agree with you when you say that I would not defend to the death your right to say something I did not agree with. But I would defend to the death your right to say. <laughs> so, although it is evident we are men of widely differing tastes and habits, circumstances ordain that we must share these chambers. Let us at least do so in civil fashion. Hello, I'm the Emperor. Just so you know, I'm wearing a thong, then white fronts, with the white sewn up, then briefs, then boxes, then long johns, then trousers, then a kilt, then a robe. <laughs> And, of course, I'm in this box, so I see. Thank you for your letter of 20th of November, 1919. <laughs> I've seen bicycles with their wheels stuck in the tram tracks. Bush chairs with their wheels stuck in the tram tracks. Mobility scooters with their wheels stuck in the tram tracks. It happens a lot, is what I'm saying. Good evening. My name is Roger Wattis, and I am a member of Britain's silent majority. My friends... There isn't much food, God knows, but there is enough for all of us. May I inform yourself that NGN does run a fully comprehensive non-smoking service, and as such a result of this, all cigarettes, cigars and cigarillos must be extinguished upon embarkation and retained in a state of extinguishment until termination of disembarkation. <laughs> Thank you, Sophie, for your cooperation. I often used to wonder about this day, you know, whether once the great game had been played out, the players would have the opportunity to shake hands across the board. And that little job sat at the back of your mind. You barely noticed it, but there it was. Another way in which you were inefficient and disorganised. <laughs> Not a proper grown-up. You've selected the audio tour for five-year-olds. <laughs> to begin, enter the large vaulted gallery across the hall. It contains arguably one of the most fascinating exhibits in the whole museum. Yes, mate. You're looking rather down in the dumps. Has your disability living allowance been cut? Yes, mate. Well, never mind. Just you try a bottle of this delicious British cider. <laughs> I know all about you. Your signature monogrammed winks, your unorthodox left-handed spin, your troubles with your wife. <laughs> Men, don't try to be clever. <laughs> The men in these stories were hapless idiots, but so are you! We was always lumped together, uh, me and him, when we was little. Not because we was friends, see, but uh, because we were ugly. Dear Mr. Persko, I am pleased to inform you that the Workers' Accident Insurance Institute has agreed to pay your claim in full. So, you're the little lady who reckons women can drive trams. Well, you're absolutely right. 45% of our drivers are women. Welcome aboard. I admit a certain amount of, of bonking did go on. <laughs> you must remember, my dear, that's just what one did in those days. Even though large tracts of Europe and many old and famous states have fallen or may fall, Well, since you ask me for the credits of this program, <laughs> I do have a list of names you may find informative. I myself, in point of fact, wrote and starred in the show, but naturally, modesty forbids me from ever telling you my name, save for one cryptic clue hidden deep within the title. 